All right, welcome everyone. Um, Todd and I are doing a summer healthy cooking class tonight. This is one of our, hi MC, hi Ann. Um, this is one of our fun cooking classes. And so Todd's in charge of the cooking. I'm gonna talk a little bit about health and digestion and what we wanna concentrate on in the summertime. So- God this, damn it. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, Tom. Hold on. So, <laughs> so uh, feel free to ask questions. And uh, this is gonna be informal and, and lots of fun. Okay, if you have a lot of background noise, you might want to mute. Um, and Ryan is here with the Southboro Public Library. And, you know, if we have a lot of different questions, Ryan is kind of facilitating all of this. So welcome. Super happy you're here. I'm going to hand it over to Todd. <clears throat> hi. Hi, everybody. Hello. So we are doing this, but it's fun. So um, today, um, doing some healthy eating and i decided on a few things i'm going to do three different things and one i've already basically done and it's just a watermelon gazpacho so if it's you can see i, I pre-made it um and I'm, I'm gonna dress it with you guys but it's and i will send out the recipes this time i will follow through to my by tomorrow morning so i i committed to that to jill but <clears throat> this is all fresh ingredients right out of a farm stand that we go to near here, Barbarian Farms, right in the uh, Westboro, um, Shrewsbury line-ish. And um, I mean, it's literally, it's very versatile. So you can use things. So I put watermelon, tomato, it's about four cups of watermelon, uh, three tomatoes, garlic. I'll, I'll send all this out. Um, bell pepper. I think I used yellow, yellow bell pepper, um, some mint. Uh, that we have growing red onion um, and it's all just chopped up rough and then in a in a blender olive oil about three tablespoons of olive oil and some sherry vinegar if you don't have sherry vinegar you can use red wine vinegar but that's about three tablespoons and then um, salt and pepper and cumin so it's really simple and then the other uh, ingredient that I put in there that you don't have to put in there <clears throat> or you could use gluten free if you want to go gluten free like bread so the Spanish version typically with gazpacho adds bread into the gazpacho. And what you do is hollow it, hollow out a, like one piece of bread, a thick piece of any type of bread you might have a couple days old or whatever, and then soak it just in water and then throw it in the blender. And then that adds a little body to it and it doesn't taste bready. So it adds a little body to the actual uh, gazpacho. So um, I did a little bit of bread in here and then all I do is um, anything that you put in there and you can put other melon in there or not. Like you could add um, uh, any, any of the melons you could have or stuff you have just left over to add in. And then just adding um, a couple extra vegetables. So I, I kept on the side, just a little bit of the red onion and I'll just dice that up a little bit. Not a, not a ton, right? and add it and you can add anything on top of this. So it's, you know, I'll, I'll do usually a little of this. I, um, I bought some bread at Wegmans, believe it or not, which I have a love hate relationship with Wegmans. I don't know why, but it's uh, whatever. It's overwhelming to me. Anyway, it's uh, <laughs> so I bought this bread. It's just a rosemary sourdough that I made croutons out of that you can toss a few in. And then um, some olive oil. I have a basil infused olive oil, or you can, you can just use, um, like I put basil and mint in, inside, but you can use, uh, in this case, I have a basil olive oil that I'll just drizzle a little on. And then I've got this Malden salt that I got, which is a very different, I'll show you the package. Um, it's Malden salt. So it's a bigger crystal, it's softer, bigger crystals, and they're really like a clean, clean finish of salt so you can just put that on or you save some of the you know the peppers that you might have had that i put in there like i would just dice that up and throw a little on whatever you want right and a mint leaf or two um and you're good to go right it's pretty simple easy and you can refrigerate it make it up to like two three days and uh just serve it cold so and you can put feta cheese whatever so pretty versatile easy you can also chop avocado as well and put that on top or slice it and a lime wedge. So anyway, 
All right. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about hydration because in the summertime, um, we want to focus on getting enough hydration. And so, you know, I, I highly recommend in the morning people use a metal tongue scraper, scrape their tongue. And it's a first thing you do in the morning, our body wants to eliminate. And when, when it eliminates, then we can hydrate with room temperature or warm water. Um, we don't want to do freezing cold ice water because that's going to go right through you. Um, I want you to think of your GI tract as kind of like a, like a leather belt. And if you, this, you know, this is like a GI tract of someone who's 50, 60. <laughs> so the GI tract, we want it to be malleable. It's not, you know, or porous, but if we're putting ice cold water on it, it's going to go right through us and it's not going to, we're not going to be able to absorb the water. So absorbability is important. And in the, in the summertime, we know it's super hot. So scraping your tongue in the morning, if you know, if you're open to that, and then really hydrating a lot before you have your coffee, before you have anything else is just a natural cleanse for the body. It moves the lymph and it's just what we want to do. And then, and then we want to slowly hydrate through the day. And that doesn't mean guzzling water. It means just sipping warm water throughout the day. And that will really help our bodies work on the jobs it needs to do. We know that digestion is hard work for our bodies and we want to help the body by making some of these jobs easier. So now I'm going to turn it over to Todd and he's going to talk about the next fun thing we're going to make. All right. So this is, um, I literally just ran outside and got some zucchini flowers. So this year and last year, I think I just started doing more of this. I don't know. I never thought it was as easy as I, it turned out to be, but it's pretty damn easy. And if you guys have gardens and you have um, <clears throat> actually zucchini in there, these things grow like crazy. And all you have to do is leave like two male and two female. So male and female. Um, so these were on actual zucchini. These are not. You just have to leave about two of each on the plant but you can harvest almost every day, multiple. So, um, and they're pretty easy. Just kind of open them up. They're a little sticky and if you rip it, it's okay. So you can um, just fry these the way they are with nothing in the middle, or you can stuff them like it's almost like, and I'm gonna do it with a ricotta, a lemon ricotta. Um, so I'm just pulling out the, what are they called? Stamen and whatever, a pistol, depending upon which flower it is. Um, it's a little bitter. You don't have to, but um, I am. So um, it's pretty pretty simple. And then what we're going to do is I have ricotta. Um, and Jill, we grab an egg, mm -hmm. um, an egg, and some Parmesan cheese and a little lemon zest. And then I'm going to coat them in a quick batter. That's simple. It's just. I can't uh, really see anything. What's that? So I, I recommend there's a second video feed of from Jill's phone that is showing the cutting board. So you can go to you can pin that so that it makes that big on your screen by going. Yeah, sorry, to, I had to move desks. So I'm going to Mary, if you don't mind, let me know when you want me to switch the pin. I'm just trying to find headphones because I had oh, to go upstairs. Yeah, go ahead so. and Oh, no problem. Thank you. You go, I would go ahead right now if you can and switch that pan over to show the cutting board where we could see what Todd's doing. Do you know how to? Yeah, Ryan. Yeah, I just was slightly not on top of it. So sorry about that. No worries. No worries. <laughs> yeah, I meant to uh, bring that up. Thank you, Mary Claire. Um, all right. So last one here. Easy enough. All right. So Ricotta cheese, I just have a, about a, a couple cups and then some Parmesan cheese, just, you know, whatever. You can kind of do it to what you like, but that's about a third of a cup and then one egg, a little salt, and some pepper. And then I'm just gonna grate a little lemon zest. 
Don't have to do a ton. Should have done this before. Sorry about the noise. Quick stir. And then, um, so just to get this, uh, you don't have to do too much on this, but um, if you want to stuff these, and like I said, you don't have to, you can add other things like bacon or mushroom or other types of cheese. You, you don't have to do what I'm doing. This is a little more traditional and you can add herbs uh, as well. Um, and this is where I, I use, I had a pastry bag, but I don't use it anymore. Um, I end up using these lovely sandwich bags that we gave for you know our kids at school. And then I'll end up cutting off at the end so I can pipe this right into the actual zucchini flour. Which it's a little messy, but you get the idea. Anyone have any questions right now? Not yet. All right. So will you seal that? Yeah. It's messy. And then to the batter, I put a little bit of um here. Okay, so I have about, um, I cut this in half because I only have about five or six uh, flowers. So about a three quarters of a cup of flour. I already put some salt in there. And then about six to eight ounces of club soda, or you can use a lager beer um, typically. And you don't want to over, over beat this or anything because it'll, it'll flatten out a little bit. So you want to kind of be kind of smooth with it and just do it to the consistency. Uh, you don't want to go too thin because it'll run right off or too thick, it, you know, it'll be too cakey. So a little bit of lumps are okay. But the club soda helps to lighten up the actual, or the beer helps lighten up the batter a little bit. So that's about it, all right? So I've got a little bit of oil about, I don't know, not even a quarter of an inch of oil sitting there um, in the pan that's heating up. So we'll have that extra hot. And this will happen quick. This is only two minutes that this will happen. So I just cut off the end. Now it becomes a piping bag, right? And just get a little bit. And you don't wanna overfill these so they're bulging. You just want enough to coat. And then the flour is actually sticky and it helps to kind of coat it again. So I'll do that quick for these. Ryan, do you have a preference, stuffed or not? Cause I'm delivering these to you. Maybe you too, Ann. Sign me up. Whatever mm -hmm. you make will be delicious. Hopefully. So not too bad, pretty simple. And I'll leave a couple, I'll leave these two just the way they are. So you wanna get the, the oil pretty hot. And then all I'm gonna do is toss these in. Give them a quick dredge. Shake off any excess and then just get them into the pan. So it should be a little hotter. I don't know if you guys can see the pan yet. We'll have to shift it for you. And these are only about three minutes or so total. And you wanna have some good spacing on this because if uh, like anything, if you overcrowd the pan, it's gonna um, not, brown up as much as you want it to. Can you switch this so they can see it? We'll try and shift it so you can see it a little. Can you see it? Oh, did you disconnect? Can you see anything? Anybody? No, we can't just move it around and it's not, it's not gonna work. All right, so the other thing, while well, that's actually frying, so I, I made some uh, pasta sauce last night. I made meatballs and sauce. So um, I tip, you can serve this just the way it is and salt them afterwards, or I'm gonna heat a little bit of this up and serve it. I won't do it now because I'm gonna serve it when I give it to those guys, but I'll just drill, either put a cup on the side or drizzle some on the plate and then arrange it on the plate. 
Um, and I'll show you these in a second. So while that's happening, I wanna get started on um, the pasta because, and I'm, you know, Heather may have already had this pasta in her lifetime, I'm sure. She might've been her who showed me this for who, who knows, right? But um, it's tomato season. So for me, again, I'm like, a, a maybe I just can't get enough tomatoes in my life. So in the summer, so um, literally just, Starting the base of this is utilizing a tomato um, for the actual base of the sauce. So I'm gonna get the tomato in cubes. And I usually do two or three. It all depends on how much you like tomatoes and how much pasta you're gonna make, but two or three um, tomatoes is usually a fair amount. Cube them and I, I got the top of the core off. I'm just gonna mention hydration while Todd is talking about cooking again. And um, another way to get good hydration in is to, in the morning, have a little Himalayan salt in with your water. So Himalayan salt or the pink salt that you can get at, a, um, at most stores now will help your body hold on to water. Um, and it's, it's a mineralizing salt, so it's good for your bones as opposed to an iodized salt. So having a little bit of salt in the morning, especially if you have a really um, healthy diet and you don't have a lot of processed foods, then, then the Himalayan salt is a very, it, it's perfectly fine for you. Also, um, chia seeds are something. You can add some chia seeds to your water and that will really hydrate your body as well. So um, just adding a little bit and chia seeds, as you probably know, will, will thicken in water and that really helps you retain water as well. So doing things like that in the morning can help you stay hydrated throughout the day. If you can do that before you, if you have caffeine, before you have caffeine, it's really gonna help your, with your hydration, which will help you with your energy during the day. All right. Uh, All right, so I put a, about, and I just flipped those because um, it's time uh, and they're starting to brown. I just put uh, two tomatoes and if you can see, you know, there's enough in there for me and the amount of pasta I'm gonna make. So I'm gonna stop at two tomatoes instead of the three. I put it in olive oil. I'm gonna put in a good solid pinch of salt. And then I'm also gonna put some crushed red pepper, which is probably about a quarter of a teaspoon and then some pepper as well. And then I'm also going to add um, red wine vinegar, and that's going to be about three to four tablespoons worth inside of here. I don't measure, but I know about how much it is. And I like it. I like the vinegar. So for me, it's not a bad thing. Um, all right. So I'm going to let that sit for a few minutes. We're going to have some other ingredients that we're going to chop up, but that's going to start to render some of the um, juices from the actual tomato so that um, that'll help create the sauce. While that's happening, we got one more minute on the uh, zucchini flowers. Um, the other ingredients in here are olives. So I'll just dice up some olives nice and fine. People get afraid of olives. This is just a background taste olive. Um, you can omit it if you so desire, but I think it adds a really good background flavor. Um, and I'm sure there's amazing health benefits and hydration in lovely olives. So um, these will go in last because um, once you put these in, it can taint the actual with the vinegar. Uh, it'll it'll taste a little off. It'll taste almost tinny if you let it sit together. So I like to do that at the end. And then the other, and one more minute on those, the other ingredient um, is arugula. So pretty basic. I got this fresh at the farm stand, washed it off. Um, and then this will go on top of our tomato mixture. So I just put that on top. And then once our pasta is done, um, and we'll be able to actually go ahead and um, so you guys can kind of see what's happening there with those zucchini flowers. They're pretty much done. That's pretty hot. Um, but as you can see, so that's pretty brown. And those are basically ready. All right. Gotta burn myself at least once. 
All right. So what we're today, what we're doing is we're having a lot of um, foods that are in season. And that's really what we want to think about when we're eating every season. Um, everyone knows about the gut biome and the gut biome is basically what keeps you healthy. So if you're eating what's in season, it's going to keep your gut healthy throughout the season, throughout the year. So I, I've shared this story many times, but if a deer eats, a deer eats the leaves off of a tree in the spring, and then that same tree, he, they eat the bark. If the deer ate the bark off the tree in the spring, it would kill the deer because he doesn't have the bacteria to break it down. So we really want to eat what's in season. It helps our digestion improve. It helps our, our gut health, which will help with our weight, with our help with our sleep, our stress, all the things. So everything that we're eating today is in season and um, it'll help your gut. So just want to mention that. So you can, you can just think about if it's in season, it's, it's good for you. Todd. <laughs> All right, so I am a little behind on the pasta bottle, the, I don't know what happened with our water boiling, um, so I'm not going to sit here and wait for it. Um, <clears throat> while I'm waiting for that, there was one other um, thing that I was going to show you, which is a quick dessert, um, and that's, um, I don't know, I, I never really was a big apricot person, but lately we've started um, eating them more and more. Um, so these basic fresh apricots, and I'm only going to do a few, just pit them. How much time do we have? Half an hour. 10 minutes, half hour. And this is simple ingredients, um, and you can use, um, mint is what I'm going to use, honey, oil, butter, you can add uh, brown sugar, you can add uh, vanilla to these as well. Um, but it really is a simple dessert that you can either serve with um, yogurt, cheese or ice cream, uh, believe it or not. So it's it's one of those most simple desserts ever uh, and very healthy. So um, I think we're going to be Oh, let me show you guys the final product. I didn't actually show you um, while we're waiting for some of this to heat up. So that's actually the final product of what those look like. Um, so I'll be passing those out. But those are, um, you know, pretty basic. You saw how quick that was. If you do have access to them, uh, they're delicious. And I just added a little salt at the end while they were hot. So right now I'm just heating up a pan for these apricots. And I'm going to put in some, some olive oil about you know two or three tablespoons. Um, oh, one thing I didn't tell you guys too also that I, I did was um, I smashed up some pistachios and you can also use almonds as well, those sliced almonds to put on the gazpacho. I should have said that before, but that's always a nice textural element to add. As long as you have people who are okay with having nuts, of course. All right, so we've got the oil just about down. I'll show it to you in a second. Okay. All right, so back to Jill. Um, I wanted to share with you, I share with everyone about digestion. Um, we know that digestion is super strong in, digestion is hard work for our bodies. It takes 70% of our body's effort to digest food. So once you ingest something in the day, and your body is, has to work on it. So we know based on Ayurveda and circadian science that digestion is super strong when the sun is high. So we want to make sure we take advantage of this and we wanna have a meal in the middle of the day that is substantial and not just sort of wing it or not have a meal or uh, not have a plan. Um, so thinking about Thinking about having a meal in your day and then 
the later the day gets, the weaker your digestion gets. So having your dinner, the earlier you can have your dinner, the earlier you can kind of close your kitchen, the better it is for your digestion, the better it is for your health. So I know that's a big habit for a lot of people to change, but I just want you to, I just like to reiterate this over and over. Um, you don't have to do it 100% of the time. I tell people all the time, experiment with doing it and then see how you feel. If you feel amazing the next day, you're on the right track. If you feel lousy and lethargic and you didn't sleep well, then your body is telling you something. So at nighttime, our bodies are trying to heal themselves and they can't, they can't do a good job when we're really full and we have to do digestion. So just wanted to have you think about having, having something in the middle of the day and, um, and, and having it be more of a substantial meal. All right. I'll send it back to Todd. All right. So uh, if you didn't notice, I forgot garlic in the tomato mixture. So I put that in finally um, and mix that up in, in, with the uh, tomato and the red wine vinegar and all that that we already put in there. So um, someone say something. So that's the um, apricots that I've got sauteing, right? And they're starting to brown a little bit. So I'm just kind of showing you that. Flip that around a little bit, let that go. And then I'm, what I'm going to do now is add about almost a quarter cup of honey. And I got some good honey for this because I think it does make a difference. Um, so if you if you can try and use a halfway decent local honey, I think that Jill would agree that's probably a good way to go is to get a local honey um, for multiple reasons. And then I'm going to add a little bit of butter, the healthiest thing you could possibly have, right? You don't have to have the butter. And this is what just, not yet. I'm going to put a little salt in now as well, but you want to get that hot and just keep basting it by little. Um, I'm going to add a little salt right now and that'll just bring out some of the sweetness, believe it or not. Like I said, you could add vanilla or you could add um, uh, brown sugar as well. So. We're not boiling yet. Bad planning on Todd's part on the pasta, but it's it really comes together pretty simple. Um, and I won't I won't keep you guys because I think after this um, we're just about ready. And any questions or anything? Not that you have to. I'm just asking. So I'm not going to actually be able to do the pot. I mean, the pasta will be another 10 minutes or 15 minutes, so I'm not going to actually go through it, but it's, it's literally add the pasta, add this lovely um, olive and then feta cheese and then mix it up and it's ready to go salt and pepper. So I won't, uh, I don't want to keep you guys just watching me boil water because um, it doesn't really make sense. So that's what the apricots look like, pretty simple. And then just adding some, um, I didn't get ice cream because we're not gonna end up eating these because we gotta eat dinner first. Well, I do, um, but just adding a little mint to this and that's it, believe it or not, just some ice cream and maybe a little sugar or even whipped cream or mascarpone cheese would be a, um, a great, what's that? Nuts. Yeah, you could add the nuts that, you know, pistachio or almonds as well, so. Um, that's it. Hey, Todd. Yeah. Um, are the skins on the apricots? I forgot what you did. They are. Yep. I just literally pitted them and then quartered them and that was it. Yeah. I leave them right on there. Delicious. They can be. <laughs> so, um, well, that's it. So thank so you. Do you guys, um, do you guys have any questions at all or, or are you Sorry. good? Okay, so um, sorry about that. We are we are happy to uh, have you guys here, and and um, 
thanks for coming. <laughs> this was so great, yeah. uh, Jill and the messy chef Todd. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, sorry about the pasta. You guys are going to eat well tonight. That's good. We're going to drop some off. Excellent. All right. All right. Hey, bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you all. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Hi, Heather. Did you hear me? No. Hi, Valerie. How are you? Oh, you heard me. Did you hear me? I did, Val. Oh, good. Hi, Heather. I was. I didn't know that I could talk into this. I haven't done a Zoom call for a long time, so. I, and it took me, I was, it was over ha almost half over by the time I got it working, but I got it and, and to talk to you. So that's nice. Exactly. All right, you hugs. Talk to you soon. You bet. Bye-bye.